All right, Ninja Nerds. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the cardiac cycle. As you guys can see here, we have a nice little picture all set up. If you guys want to follow along, we would truly appreciate that. And I also think it would definitely help in aiding in this learning process. So go down into the description box. We're going to have a little link there that will allow for you to download that uh, picture. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the cardiac cycle and we're going to go through each individual phase. So as you can see here to the left, we have the first phase of the cardiac cycle. On average, the cardiac cycle is about 0.8 seconds, which is very small. I mean, that's not a lot of time. So it's amazing how, how fast blood can flow through the heart um, and through the great vessels. So first stage is mid to late ventricular diastole. What does that mean? Diastole just means that the heart is relaxing. So if it's relaxing, that means that it's filling with blood. Well, where is it filling with blood from? Well, I'm glad you guys asked. You know you have the superior vena cava and you have the inferior vena cava. Well, these guys are bringing blood back to the right side of the heart, right? And even have this little like guy here, this is our coronary sinus, and he's emptying blood into the right atrium as well. So blood is coming into the atria, the right atrium via those structures. And then also, don't forget, we're also going to be having the veins from the pulmonary veins, right? They're gonna be bringing blood back to the left atrium. Now, once the blood is in these atria, what happens? Well, they're supposed to move down, right? Gravity allows for them to move from the left atrium or right atrium down to the right ventricle or left ventricle. Well, how do they do that? They have to move across these valves, right? So as you can see here, we're gonna have a valve here, and that is going to be our tricuspid valve. And we're gonna have a, a valve here, which is called the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. What happens is, is the atria start filling with blood, but these valves, the mitral and tricuspid valve are naturally kind of like loose, right? And the reason why is the myocardium isn't contracted, it's relaxed. So the ventricle my myocardium is relaxed, so the papillary muscles aren't really anchoring those valves down through the chordae tendineae. So they're kind of loose. Because of that, these valves are kind of like open a little bit. And what that allows for is that allows for blood to kind of naturally flow down into the ventricles. You know how much? It's actually pretty astonishing. 70 to 80% of blood passively flows down from the atria into the ventricles through these valves. And they haven't even contracted yet. The atria haven't contracted. So that's really important. Now, after 70 to 80% of the blood passively flows down, let's actually write that. That's important to remember. Could be like a maybe a little test question. Afterwards, the atria start contracting, right? When the atria contract, the pressure inside of the atria starts overcoming the pressure inside of the ventricle, right? It's a very simple thing. As we know, according to Boyle's law, that you have pressure, right? P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And we know that Boyle's law simply says that as you increase the pressure of something, what do you do to the volume? You decrease the volume, right? And it's vice versa. So. As this chamber is getting smaller, the pressure inside of that chamber is getting larger. And so it's gonna overcome the pressure in the ventricles. So now look, it's a very simple concept. Atrial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure. Now we already said that the valves, the mitral valve and the, uh, the mitral valve and tricuspid valve were already open. So that's important, but they're gonna open up even more whenever the atria contracts. So AV valves, the mitral and the tricuspid are both going to be open. So that's an important thing to remember. These are open. Next thing, the ventricles are gonna be receiving this blood, right? But they're in relaxation. So their pressure is going to be like zero. So let's just write zero here for the pressure inside of the right and left ventricle. The pressure in the aorta generally during diastole is about 80 and the pressure in the pulmonary trunk is generally maybe anywhere from seven to 10 millimeters of mercury. So what you tell me, which pressure is greater? The right ventricular pressure or the pulmonary trunk pressure? The pulmonary trunk pressure, which is the artery, right? What's bit greater, the aortic pressure or the left ventricular pressure? Well, the aortic pressure. So it's a very simple concept here that the arterial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure. Now, remember I told you that the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve were already open. Well, it doesn't really matter. What I want you to remember is that 
the valves are going to open in one direction and they're going to allow for blood to flow downwards like we already uh, kind of shown here with the arrow right so it's supposed to open well here's going to be your pulmonary semilunar valve and the aortic semilunar valve and they only allow for blood to flow in one direction out right now if the pressure in the ventricle is greater than the pressure in the, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, it would leave, but it isn't. So what does that mean? Are these valves going to be open or closed? They're going to be closed. So it's important to remember that the aortic and the pulmonary semilunar valve, or the pulmonic, are both going to be closed. And that doesn't make any sound. There's no sound when valves are open. So that's important to remember right here. There's no sound. There shouldn't be any sound. If there is, that's pathology. Last thing that I want you guys to remember for this stage is that if the atria are contracting, that means that they had to depolarize in order to push the remaining 20 to 30% of the blood down to the ventricles. Well, in order for the atria to contract, they had to depolarize. What does that show up on the EKG? The P wave. So you'll see the P wave on the EKG, and that's usually representative more of the later end of ventricular diastole. All right, so isovolumetric contraction. What does that mean? Iso is the same, right? So it's the same amount of volume during ventricular contraction. That's an important thing to remember. Reason why is, is a simple thing as saying there's no blood entering the ventricles and no blood leaving the ventricles. So what happens? The ventricles were originally at zero millimeters of mercury of pressure while they were relaxing in the previous phase. They start contracting. Those myocytes start becoming depolarized. They start kicking it up and they start increasing the pressure inside of these chambers. Let's say that the right ventricle goes up. Let's just say it goes up to like four millimeters of mercury. And let's say that the uh, pressure inside the left ventricle goes up to like 25 millimeters of mercury. What the heck, right? It doesn't really matter just for the whole overall functional purpose of this. Now, we can say uh, very simply that the pressure inside of the right ventricle is greater than the pressure in the atria because the atria is relaxing now so it's going to go back towards zero the pressure in the left ventricle is going to be greater than the pressure in the left atrium because it's also going to be going down and approaching zero as well so because of that remember i told you that the valves they only allow for one way flow and it was only to go from the atria down to the ventricles right so are they going to be open anymore? No, our pressure is gonna be increasing so it should snap those valves shut. That's important. So what happens then? So we know that the ventricular pressure is rising, right? And the ventricular pressure is going to rise and become greater than the atrial pressure. And because it's greater than the atrial pressure, that's gonna snap the actual tricuspid valve and the bicuspid or mitral valve shut. So now these puppies, your mitral valve and your tricuspid valve are going to close. Now, whenever they close, they should make a sound. And that is going to be your S1, okay? S1, you might also hear it very simplistically referred to as lub. Okay, so it's gonna be your S1 heart sound. That's a normal sound. That's what we should be hearing. Next thing. We know that the ventricle, ventricles are gonna be contracting and pumping and pushing, trying to pump blood out, right? But remember, we said that the only way they can do that is if their pressure is greater than the arterial pressure. So what's the pressure in the aorta? The pressure in the aorta is about 80 millimeters of mercury, right, during diastole. And the pressure inside of the pulmonary trunk, let's just say it's about 10 millimeters of mercury. Now, 25 in comparison to 80, it's still less than, right? So the ventricular pressure is still less than the arterial pressure. And same thing over here for the right ventricle, it's four as compared to 10, so it's still less than. So let's write it like this. The arterial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure. Now, what did I tell you? These valves, aortic, and pulmonic valve only open whenever the pressure in the ventricle is greater than the pressure in the arteries, but it's not. So are they gonna be open or closed? Answer me guys. Ah, these suckers are gonna be closed, right? They're not gonna open yet. So the aortic and the pulmonic valve should be closed, okay? So that's important, they should still be closed. Now, ventricles are starting to depolarize, right? They haven't gone into complete contraction yet because they're not having enough pressure inside of the ventricles to overcome the arterial pressure. But still, nonetheless, the ventricles are depolarizing. What part of the EKG is that? That's the QRS complex. So 
we could represent this as more of the early phases of the QRS complex for isovolumetric contraction. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is move on to mid to late ventricular systole. So it's a very simple thing, right? The ventricles are still contracting. We're just kind of moving in a stepwise phase, mid to late ventricular diastole, going into isovolumetric contraction, and going into mid to late ventricular systole. And we're looking at this in like a snapshot. Remember, this is only 0.8 seconds, so we're looking at that in a very small time frame. So the ventricles are continuing their contraction. So they were at zero, let's just say. They go up to four. And now let's just say that these puppies go up to 25. Woo! And this one was zero. We bump it up to 25. It goes ham bone and goes up to 120. Okay? So now we got 25 millimeters of mercury in the right ventricle. We got 120 millimeters of mercury in our left ventricle. Well, again, what was the pressure in the aorta? Well, the pressure was 80 millimeters of mercury. What was the pressure in the pulmonary trunk? Well, we said it was about 10, right? Now, let's think about this, okay? Pressure inside the atria, it should still be zero. It's starting to fill with blood. That is an important thing to remember. Mentally ventricular systole, there is blood filling into the atria, but the ventricular pressure is going to be much, much greater. 25, 120, these are gonna be the high pressure area, right? So we know that the ventricular pressure, this is a simple one, right? The ventricular pressure is greater than the atrial pressure. So with that being said, is the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, they should still be closed, correct? Absolutely, right? So the mitral valve and our tricuspid valve, these bad boys should still be closed. Now here's what I want you to understand, just so that there's no confusion. Whenever the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve closed during isovolumetric contraction, that snapping of them shut is what caused the sound. These guys are still closed, okay, during mid to late ventricular systole, so there shouldn't be any sound. If there is, uh, some kind of pathology. And again, we're not gonna go into detail on that right now, all right? So now, next thing we're gonna do is, okay, we know ventricular pressure, is it greater than the arterial pressure? Well, we already said 25 in comparison to 10. Okay, that's, that's greater than. 120 in comparison to 80, that's greater than. The pressure gradient is high enough for blood to be able to flow out of the ventricles and into the arteries. So therefore, the ventricular pressure is greater than the arterial pressure. Well, okay, now, if that's the case, what happens to those semilunar valves? Well, we said that these only allow for blood to flow out of the ventricles and into the pulmonary trunk of the aorta. So these suckers should open. So the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve, they should open. Now remember, I told you, there shouldn't be any sound here. If there is, that's some type of pathology. So these guys are opening. All right, the ventricles are still contracting. What does that mean then for the EKG? Well, if they're depolarizing, that's causing them to contract. So therefore, we're seeing this more in the later stages of the QRS complex. All right, so the last phase here is gonna be isovolumetric relaxation. So again, think about the name, iso. Right, so isovolumetric, meaning that the volume is the same while the heart is in relaxation. Again, what does that mean? No blood is entering and no blood is leaving the ventricles, okay? So now, if the ventricles are relaxing, let's think about this kind of just, again, in a stepwise process. It was at zero, it went to four, then it went to 25. Where's it gonna start going back towards? it's gonna start trending its way back towards zero. We're not there yet, but it is approaching this area, okay? Same thing here in the left ventricle, started at zero, right? Went up towards 25, went up towards 120, we ejected the blood, and we're starting to approach zero again. So, as that is happening, the pressure is starting to drop and drop and drop. But as I, you noticed here, I didn't have it go back to zero. It's not at zero yet. So the ventricular pressure at this point in time is still greater than the atrial pressure. Not by much, but it is still greater than. So that's what I want you to remember. So the ventricular pressure hasn't approached zero yet. And so the ventricular pressure is greater than the atrial pressure. So think about that then. 
Remember, blood only flows from the atria into the ventricles through the, um, the tricuspid and the mitral valve. So are they going to be open or closed? Well, the pressure here in the ventricles is greater than the pressure inside of the atria. So therefore, no, those valves are still going to be closed. So our mitral and our tricuspid valve are going to be closed. And is that going to be making any sound? Again, no, there should be no sound in this process here. Next thing, ventricles as compared to the aorta. Well, now again, I told you that the aorta is actually going to be filling with blood, right? So during this period, it's actually going to be filling with a lot of blood. So it should actually, you know, what happens is once the ventricles contract and it pumps blood out into it, the, the pressure should start going back down towards 80 and again, back down towards 10. Now, what happens is the ventricular pressure is going to be lower than the actual arterial pressure because again, this is back at 80, this is back at 10, and these are trending down towards zero. So as the ventricular pressure starts dropping below the arterial pressure, what's gonna wanna happen towards the, with respect to these valves? Well, these valves, remember, they only allow for one-way blood flow out of the ventricles and into the arteries. They're not gonna allow for blood to come back. So these valves are now going to be snapping shut because they were open. We opened them up to allow for blood to eject out, but they're gonna start trying to trend back downwards, right? So we need these valves to snap shut. So because of that, because the arterial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure, what's gonna to happen to that pulmonic and aortic valve? They're going to snap shut. So now the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve are going to close. When they close, what is that going to do? That's gonna produce a sound when they snap shut. So what's that sound? It's going to be our second heart sound, the S2, which sometimes you might hear referred to as dub. Okay, that is an important sound. This is a normal heart sound. S1 and S2 are your normal heart sounds. If you hear something that's not S1 and S2, that might be something like a pathology. However, there can be certain situations where you can have splitting, okay? It, we'll talk about that in another video though. All right, so the last thing that we have to think about, the ventricles are relaxing. So if the ventricles are relaxing, that means that they are repolarizing. And if they're repolarizing, that means that they're going to be doing what on the EKG? It's gonna be the T wave now, okay? So you'll see this as the T wave on the EKG. Okay, so that covers everything for our cardiac cycle. All right, engineers, so that covers our cardiac cycle video. I hope it made sense. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, I hope that it was able to help you guys maybe clear up any confusion that you might have. Um, as always, guys, if you guys want to, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section. Please subscribe as well. We appreciate that. Also, keep in contact with us. Go down in our description box. We have links to our Instagram, our Facebook, our Patreon, and even our GoFundMe page. If you guys want to help us out, we would truly appreciate that. It'll help us to continue to make high-quality videos for you guys' enjoyment. But as always, Ninja Nerds, we love you. We thank you so much for being the greatest fans ever. And uh, as always, Ninja Nerds, until next time.